Hey everyone, me Kevin here. I got a hold of a call that Donald Trump just had with very important people, governors, chiefs of staffs, everybody related to the protests and managing the protests. And I'm going to play that audio. I'm going to pause to add clarity or occasional commentary, but let's just get through this. It's about a 47 minute call that I've cut down to the most interesting six minutes, okay? So if you want the entire audio, I will link that down below, but you're better off listening to the highlights because it's, it gets kind of long and boring and you get the gist of it with this okay but if you want it in context link down below right next to the link for awesome life insurance and two free stocks with Weeble because why would you not want two free stocks with Weeble when you deposit hundred dollars or awesome life insurance okay pitch over let's get into this and by the way if you like this kind of content make sure to subscribe okay here we go the call starts off with Donald Trump suggesting that governors need to dominate they have to be aggressive Let's get into this and then also see what he suggests in terms of punishments for, uh, you know, vandals and people rioting. It shouldn't be hard to take care of it. We're going to take care of it. Get a lot of men. We have all the men and women that you need. But people aren't calling them up. You have to dominate. If you don't dominate, you're wasting your time. They're going to run over you. You're going to look like a bunch of jerks. You have to dominate. And... You have to arrest people and you have to try people and they have to go to jail for long periods. Of so I, I'm going to break it right here because Donald Trump starts talking about Philadelphia, but he's saying you have to arrest people, try people and put them in jail for long periods of time to basically disincentivize people from rioting. And we're going to clamp down very, very strong. But you got to arrest people, you have to try people, you have to put them in jail for 10 years and you'll never see this stuff again. And you have to let them know that. Uh, they're trying to get people out on bail in uh, in uh, Minneapolis. I understand they're in there trying to get all these guys out on bail. So you have them on tape, you have them on television. In history, there's never been anybody taped so much committing a crime. You have these guys throwing rocks. Yeah, you can see it. They show them. They showed it last night on one of the stations on one of the networks throwing a big brick. And they had him in slow motion, slow motion replay. They put him like it's like a fielder catching a ball or throwing a ball. They have him in slow motion replay. You see exactly who he is. Everybody knows. You'll find out exactly. You have everybody is on tape. You got to arrest all those people, and you got to try them. And if they get five years or ten years, they have to get five years or ten years. There's no retribution. So Donald Trump here is basically complaining over the fact that people are getting arrested for rioting and they're getting slapped on the wrist with, you know, minor citations or misdemeanors or, you know, notice to appear in court and they're not even going to jail. And, and that's what's keeping people basically rioting. So I say that and the word is dominate. If you don't dominate your city and your state, uh, they're going to walk away with you. And we're doing it in Washington and D.C. We're going to do something that uh, people haven't seen before. So this is actually a little bit of an interesting possible threat for D.C. that something's going to happen in D.C. tonight that hasn't been seen before. That's what he said. We have no idea what he's referring to. Does this mean more National Guard? Does this mean martial law? We have no idea. It'll be interesting to see, though. Remember, this is being recorded on June 1st. But uh, you're going to have total domination. And then you have to put him in jail and you have to authorize whatever it is, whoever it is you authorize. And with that, I'll let Bill Barr say a few words and I'm going to have General Billy speak. Let's go, Bill. So now I'm going to fast forward a little bit and just get to a little bit more of the interesting part of what the next person says. Law enforcement response is not going to work unless we dominate the streets, as the president said. We have to control the streets. If we treat these as demonstrations, the police are pinned back guarding places and don't have the dynamic ability to go out and arrest the troublemakers. Basically here he's saying, look, we need way more than just what the cops have available. That is, we need more support. We need National Guard on the streets because the cops, look, they might protect a building, but then you can't go arrest the people throwing bottles and looting stores. There's just, there are not enough people. They're just standing in a line watching the events. Then when they disperse the crowds, the crowds go running off in different directions and create havoc, go into looting and other things. We have to control the crowds and not react to what's happening on the street. And that requires a strong presence. Philadelphia, you better toughen up because what's going on in Philadelphia, like New York, is terrible. It's terrible. 
Is that a tough one? They'll never leave. I know you want to say, oh, let's not call up the guard or let's call up 200 people. You've got a big national guard out there that's ready to come in and fight like hell. I tell you, the best, what they did in Minneapolis was incredible. They, they went in and dominated. So here he's Donald Trump is referring to the fact that Minneapolis called in the National Guard and dominated his words, right? But he's expressing frustration that other states are not calling in as much of the National Guard. Now, this isn't clear, but I remember when the national emergency was executed in March, three states basically got the National Guard for free. New York, California, and Washington. The National Guard is really expensive. Usually states have to reimburse the federal government for the National Guard. Problem is, a lot of states don't have any money because they've lost months of tax revenue during the pandemic. And unless the federal government is providing the National Guard for free, which we don't have clarity on this, I don't know that they are, otherwise I feel like we've just seen something on this, but maybe they are. But that might explain why states are like, yeah, thanks for offering the National Guard, Donald Trump, but we don't have any money to pay for this. Congress is sitting on the additional relief funding bill and we're stuck waiting and seeing. Let's see what Donald Trump uh, says here. Sure. I don't know what it is politically when you don't want to call out people. They're ready, willing, and able. They want to fight for the country. I don't know what it is. Someday you'll have to explain it to me. But it takes so long to call them up. We're waiting for you. And here he's lamenting, you know, hey, look, we've got the guard ready. Governors, why don't you get off your bum and call in the National Guard? I think it has to do with money. It usually has to do with money. We're shocked in certain areas, L.A. We're shocked that you're not using the greatest resource you can use, and they're trained for this stuff, and they're incredible. Why you're not calling them up? I don't know, but you're making a mistake because you're making yourself look like look like fools. Now, Phoenix is our fifth uh, largest metropolitan area in the entire country, and we've learned some lessons over the last three days. First, the, the more aggressive approach does work. They are professional anarchists in many cases, and uh, they're leading a group of a lot more people than them, and these are easily led people. So uh, just clarity here, it, basically in Arizona, they're saying, look, we've had a lot of success managing by having more of a presence. Donald Trump says, look, all it takes is a few anarchists and they can lead a lot of, quote, easily led people. In other words, we need more of a presence to be able to quell any kind of potential riots. Let's keep listening. It seems listening to the governors in telephone calls over the days and also but what we've been saying today is I don't think we're prosecuting enough people. It seems I to me uh, they, these folks, are, they're just getting a, a 30 days or $500. That's just the cost of doing business. So this is, a, I believe, a governor lamenting over the fact that, hey, like, we're not prosecuting the people enough. In other words, like, you're getting a $500 fine or maybe 30 days in jail as he said, that's the cost of doing business. Like, I guess, I guess that's just my calling. It's part of my protest, part of my riot. All right, give me 30 days or a notice to appear, right? Kind of talked about that earlier. Keep this moment, I can't let it pass it. Oh, oh, this was good. So this is actually, I believe, the governor, I couldn't hear his name. I think it was Governor J.B., but I'm not sure. That might be Illinois. I'm not sure, though. Uh, so correct me if I'm wrong, but either way, it's interesting because what I want you to hear is this governor actually calls out Donald Trump for his, uh, well, tweets and uh, listen to Trump respond. It just gives you a little bit more perspective on how this call went. Keep this moment. I can't let it pass it. To speak up and say um, that I've been extraordinarily concerned about the rhetoric that's been used by you. It's been inflammatory and it's not okay for that officer to choke George Floyd to death. But we have to call for calm. We have to have police reform called for. Uh, we called out our National Guard and our state police. But the rhetoric that's coming out of the White House is making it worse. And I, I need to you know, say that people are feeling real pain out there. Um, and we've got to have national leadership in calling for calm and making sure that we're addressing the concerns of the legitimate peaceful protesters. Uh, that will help us to bring order. Okay, well, thank you very much, J.B. I don't like your rhetoric much.
much either because I watched it with respect to the coronavirus, and I don't like your rhetoric much either. I think you could have done a much better job, frankly. But that's okay. You know, we don't agree with each other. Uh, as far as the event, <laughs> uh, with respect to this so here you can kind of see Donald Trump spar with the comments, and this is how Donald Trump leaves off the call. The way we're going to solve the problem is to be fair and be strong. You have to be strong. Use our National Guard. You're much better off with too many than too few. That's one thing we have found out. Too many is a good thing. Too few is unacceptable. So go out there and get him. Good luck tonight. And if you have any information, let us know, please. Thank you very much. Well, there you have the phone call. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing to the channel and get your life insurance linked down below. Get your two free stocks with Weeble. Remember, just deposit $100, which you can use to trade with Weeble, and then you get two extra free stocks worth up to $1,400. Thank you so much for watching, folks. We will see you next time.